Assalamu alaikum and welcome to another episode of Purification of the Soul. I'm your host, Abu Abdus Salam. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa We have in the studio uh, three guests uh, Ahmed uh, from the right, uh, Gulraz, and uh, Muhammad. Assalamu alaikum. Wa One day, Imam Ahmed ibn Hanbal he heard that a scholar in Damascus knew of a hadith that he didn't know of. So Imam Ahmed wanted to hear this hadith. So he traveled all the way from Baghdad, which is in Iraq, to Damascus, which is in Syria, just to hear this one hadith. But when he reached Damascus, he stayed there for a short while, asking about the scholar, about his manners, about his social dealings and his statements. Once he was satisfied about the truthfulness of the scholar, then he went to him in the early morning after taking a bath, wearing perfume and dressing himself in the best garments. When he got close to this scholar's house, he found the scholar outside pulling his donkey. The scholar used to earn his living by carrying people's goods using this donkey. However, on this occasion, the donkey refused to go with him. So he tried to pull it. He tried to drive it using various means, but the donkey simply refused. It refused to follow the imam. So he folded the ends of his garment and he offered it to the donkey in order to fool it into thinking that there is some barley inside of this garment. Now the donkey followed him and Imam Ahmed looked at the garment and found uh, that, that the scholar's garment had no barley in it. Upon this Imam Ahmed promptly left the scholar without asking him for the hadith uh, and he returned to his hometown. As for, uh, as he continued, as it, and in this instance he considered the scholar to be untruthful by this incident. Look at the piety of Imam Ahmad. He saw this scholar fooling the donkey. And because of this one action, he took him to be untruthful and he refused to take the hadith of this person. Now this is how the scholars of old would look at lying. And they would see it as a very serious problem. Such that even the one who lied to an animal or fooled an animal was considered untruthful in their eyes. And this is the next disease we're going to look at. We're going to look at lying and we've seen uh, in previous episodes how purification of the soul is achieved in two ways. Let's have a recap of that, uh, Muhammad. One of these ways? The first is cleansing the soul of the bad characteristics present. Cleansing the soul of the bad characteristics from anger to ostentation, mm -hmm. uh, from uh, backbiting and slandering to carrying tales, namima, uh, and likewise lying. And what is the second stage of purification of the soul? To increase in the good, the good uh, qualities. To increase in oneself with good qualities and adorn oneself with good, good qualities of the soul. Uh, so in today's episode, we'll be talking about lying. And lying is a big sin in Islam. Abdullah ibn Amir, uh, anhu, he said that one day the Messenger of Allah وسلم, came to my house when I was a child. I went to play and my mother called me. She said, Oh Abdullah, come, come to me so that I can give you something. So the Prophet ﷺ, he asked her, What do you intend to give him? She said that she wanted to give me some dates. So the Prophet ﷺ said, If you did not do that, if you did not fulfill this, then a lie would be written against you. A lie would be written against you. And this is how serious the Prophet ﷺ took someone's word. If someone says something, he's expected to tell the truth at all times. In fact, this can be seen once when Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu, he gave a khutbah after the death of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam. He said that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wasallam stood in this very place that I'm standing in the first year. And then he cried. Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu begin, began to cry. Why did he cry, Guras? Because he remembered the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam that he was in this same Because position. he remembered the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam. He remembered that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam would give the khutbah or the sermon in the same place that he was standing at that time. And then he said, uh, and then he carried on to say, Abu Bakr said, that the Prophet ﷺ said while he was standing in this place, indeed lying leads to iniquity, and indeed iniquity leads to the fire. So a man will lie until he is written as a liar with, with Allah. And this hadith is agreed upon, muttafaqun alayh, which means that it is related by Bukhari and Muslim. So we can see some of the dangers of lying. Let's have a look at, let's ask our audience why lying is considered such a great sin in Islam, Brother Ahmed. 
lying is, um, I mean, not telling the truth is, is something bad. I mean, it leads to, to different things. I mean, uh, like, for instance, when I, I lie... Um, lead to another it, lie. It lead, leads, yeah, to, to another lie. Mm. Um, and, and it can, I mean, things go on and things couldn't be covered. I mean... Yeah. It can ruin a person as well. For instance, their reputation, might, they exactly, might become yeah. known as a liar. Yes, they might become known as a lie. But why is it haram? Why is it prohibited in Islam? Because Islam calls for honesty and things yes, to be and taken. Yes, and these are the characteristics of a believer. The, <laughs> m the Muslim, he has to have certain characteristics. From among them is honesty, truthfulness, telling the truth. When we're giving the message of Islam to other people, if they see that, oh, these Muslims are lying, then of course they may judge Islam mm -hmm. by looking at the character of the Muslim. And universally it is accepted, in every religion it is accepted, that li or in most religions I should say, there are some religions that don't accept this, but almost universally people accept that lying is a bad trait. And Khalid ibn Subay was asked once if a person would be called a liar in Islam by just lying once, and he replied yes. So this shows that we should refrain from lying even if it is only once. Omar ibn Abdul Aziz, who is Omar ibn Abdul Aziz? Oh, one of the uh, Sahaba. No. He's uh, one of the, the Khulafa. Uh, uh, one of the Khulafa no, no, after, after the Sahaba. After the Maybe about a hundred years or so after uh -huh. that. After them. He was one of the righteous l rulers. And he was also a scholar uh, in Islam. Mm -hmm. uh, Omar ibn Abdul Aziz, rahimahullah, he spoke to a person called Al Walid ibn Abdul Malik about something. So the latter said to him, You've lied. He said, You've lied. So what did Omar uh, rahimahullah he replied? He said, by Allah, I have not lied since I learned that lying disgraces a person. And in another narration, since I began to wear trousers. In other words, when I, when I left uh, nappies, if you like. <laughs> okay, that's a modern interpretation of that. But in other words, as a child, from a child, I never lied. So the person could actually count and say clearly, categorically, that I've never lied in my life, in a sense. Many scholars considered lying to be of the major sins, of the major sins. Ali radiallahu anhu, he said that the greatest of sins in the sight of Allah is lying. And the greatest regret is the regret on the day of judgment. Why is lying such a great sin? And why is it the greatest of sins? Because one could say that lying leads to hypocrisy. That's one way of looking at it. Good Raz, another way? Because any, like, look, many sins... You know, lying. What is the greatest sins. sin? Shirk. 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 And what is shirk? It's a lie against Allah. It's a lie, it's lie against, against Allah. Allah. In, in, in one sense. It's a lie against Allah. When a person, he attributes lordship to other than Allah, then this is a lie. A lie. When he attributes names and attributes to Allah which are false, or attributes some, some of Allah's names and attributes to the creation, this is all, also a lie. And likewise, when he worships, other than Allah, or he directs his dua, for example, to other than Allah. This is also a lie. How is that? Because the, the other thing doesn't deserve that worship. The other thing doesn't deserve the worship. So by making dua, for example, to even someone righteous like the Prophet wasallam, <laughs> this is an act of shirk. Because the Prophet wasallam said, a dua huwa al-ibadah. Dua is worship. And also, uh, we say 17 times a day, إِيَّاكَ نَعْبُدُ وَإِيَّاكَ نَسْتَعِينَ You alone we worship, O oh Allah, and you alone we ask for help. And so, this is an, an aspect of shirk, where a person, by directing his dua to the Prophet ﷺ, or to an angel, or to a righteous person, or to even idols and anything like that, then in reality he's lying, because he is saying that this person, or this angel, or this object, like an idol, is capable of answering my request, answering my dua. So this is how lying is one of the greatest sins, if not the greatest sin. Because the essence of shirk is built on lying. lying. Likewise, hypocrisy is built on lying. Uh, Al-Hasan, rahimahullah, he said that it used to be said, and one of the things that it used to be said, is that the foundation upon which hypocrisy is built is lying. Again, why is that the case? Because the, the essence of hypocrisy is to lie. Uh -huh. Lying uh, shows you're, you're saying something when, real, when the reality is different. Exactly. In the same way, hypocrisy is to show something different to the Where reality. Different to the reality, yes. So when a person he sh he's, he, he's showing hypocrisy, 
then he's saying one thing or doing one thing, whereas the internal mm -hmm. aspects are different. The intention may be different. And this is, this is uh, hiding the truth, if you like. Mm -hmm. In the same way, lied, lying is hiding the truth. Lying is hiding the truth. So, this is how hypocrisy is uh, similar to lying. It is to show one thing even though the reality is different. And this is why the Prophet ﷺ said that there are four characteristics that if a person has, he is a true hypocrite. There are four characteristics that if a person has, he's a true hypocrite. And if he has one of these characteristics, he has a trait of hypocrisy until he leaves it. After the break, inshallah, we'll have a look at these four characteristics. Huda TV strives to bring you, our viewers, the best in Islamic programming. Please send your comments and suggestions to feedback at huda.tv. Assalamu alaikum and welcome back. Before the break, we were talking about lying. And we mentioned the hadith of the Prophet ﷺ, or part of the hadith, where he said that there are four characteristics that if a person has, he's a true hypocrite. And if he has one of these, three, one of these characteristics, he has a trait of hypocrisy until he leaves that characteristic. He said that when he's entrusted, he betrays that trust. When he speaks, he lies. When he makes a covenant, he acts treacherously. And when he disputes, he utters foul language. Let's take a side point here and look at some examples of each of these four uh, types of hypocrisy. So when he speaks, he lies. This is the name of this is the topic at the moment. Let's have some examples of that. So, for instance, if someone asks a person, "How old is he?" In reality, he might be twenty, but he might say, "I'm twenty-five." Mm, why would he do that? It'd be the opposite. <laughs> <laughs> well, exactly, but you know. Yeah. That, so he speaks, he lies. Yeah. And some people, they have a natural tendency of just lying. Mm. Even if there's no need to lie, they lie. Even if there's no need to lie. White lies. What they call white lies, yes, mm. in the West. Uh, so when he speaks, he lies. When, he, uh, when he's entrusted, he betrays that trust. Let's have an example of that. For example, a, a worker. You pay a worker to, mm -hmm. I don't know, uh, build a house, for example, and you ask for certain standards. Mm. But he, to save money, he uses cheaper products. So he's entrusted mm. with certain certain standard. He betrays that trust and yeah, uses cheaper Yeah, that would probably quality. be more under uh, if he uh, contracts or if he's contracted to, to, to do something. Mm. When he makes a covenant, then he breaks uh, that contract or he doesn't fulfill that contract. Mm. What about betraying one's trust? Uh, and then, for example, if he's given something, get some property to look after. Yes, and he doesn't look after it. A house to look after and he... Trashes out. Has house parties every night and <laughs> trashes the place. Or it's somebody's car. He's given his car to somebody to look after. Uh, while he's on holiday, expecting that the person will just simply, you know, leave it in his garage or something. But he actually takes it out. He drives it around, you know. And I heard a, a story where a person did this and he actually crashed the car. And yeah, she crashed the car. So it led on to uh, many problems. And when he disputes, he utters foul language. Like cursing, when, when people curse. People uh, sometimes curse for, for no reason. Um, uh, it's, it's sometimes it, it becomes a matter ha of a habit. Every time somebody Every disputes time, yeah. him, he Just replies <laughs> with cursing, swearing. Yeah. Even if there's no dispute, it just becomes such a habit. He yeah. just speaks like that all dispute. the time. It, but these things are quite sin, uh, severe, they're quite serious, because as the Prophet said, if a person has all four of these characteristics, then he's a true hypocrite. Till I leave. He's a sheer hypocrite. Uh -huh. um, if he has one of these four characteristics, then he has a trait of hypocrisy until he leaves uh, those traits. There's another hadith similar to this, where the Prophet said that there are three signs of a hypocrite, even if he prays, fasts and thinks he's a Muslim. And this is an important point. If he prays, fasts and thinks he's a Muslim. And even then, if he has one of these three characteristics, the Prophet ﷺ said, when he speaks, he lies. When he promises, he breaks those promises. And when he is entrusted, he betrays that trust. 
And this is a characteristic of, uh, these are the characteristics of hypocrites. Uh, as a side point, the issue of betraying one's trust, or rather, when he promises, he breaks that uh, promise. Many people actually falsely think that a promise is something when someone uses the word promise. When he says, mm -hmm. I promise to give you so and so or such and such. I, will, I promise to do such and such. This is not actually the correct understanding in Islam. Okay, a promise is simply when a person promises to do something. He, he says that I will do something. And it is understood by the other person that he will actually do that, that thing. So for example, if someone said, uh, you know, uh, I'll wash your car. Okay, I like the example of the cars. <laughs> But let's say somebody says, I'll wash your car. Um, and he, this is like a promise now. It's binding upon him if the other person understands from that that he's going to wash his car. So Without having to use the word I promise. Even if he doesn't use the word I promise. Uh, so if a person, he offers to do a lot of things. And some people, they, they offer to do a lot of things out of niceness. They, they, they want to be nice. But maybe they, you know, they can't do that. This is actually a bad thing, not a good thing. Because a person needs to be realistic. If he can achieve that, then he can, uh, then he can promise. Otherwise, he can't. He I guess shouldn't. a lot of these characteristics have a sense of lying. Related exactly. To it, right? they, all re they all turn back to the issue okay. of lying. They all go back to the issue of lying. How is that? For example, if he promises to do something and he doesn't, then... It's lying. like a lie, yes. Like if, he if, he, if he's entrusted with something, he's, he's saying that he will entrust, he will, he will be able to, uh, you know, fulfill that trust. But then he can't. Again, like a lie. So a when he's contracted, uh -huh. he, he, he doesn't uh, fulfill his contract. Again, it's like a lie. So let's have a look at some interviews that we took earlier from the people on the street. It's when a person doesn't tell the truth. Uh, he can lie to himself and he can lie on other people. I think that uh, lying is affecting the soul uh, because if I'm going to lie all the time, I'm not going to feel that I'm a respectable person in the society. When you lie, you start believing the lie you said and you are not living in reality. It depends on the personality of uh, the person uh, which can uh, lies on, uh, on, on the people. In. And uh, sometimes uh, you can deceive other people by lying. Some very interesting observations made there. Before the uh, interviews, we were talking about how lying is such a major sin, or such a grave, serious sin, in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that it is so severe that it's considered to be one of the traits of the hypocrites. Now there are many occasions where people lie. And the worst type of lying is to lie about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Uh, as for lying about Allah, we've already mentioned that this can come under shirk. Can come under shirk if a person attributes lordship to other than Allah, or if he attributes some of the names and attributes that don't belong to Allah to Allah, or attributes some of the names and attributes of Allah, uh, which are solely for Allah, to the creation, or likens Allah to his creation. And likewise, lying in ibadah, in worship of Allah. Uh, how is that the case, Gulras? That you direct your worship to other than Allah. How is that lying? Because uh, the worship truly deserve, doesn't deserve to be... The person doesn't deserve to be worshipped. Yes, because nobody on, and nothing deserves any kind of worship except for Allah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Except for Allah. So when a person is making dua, for example, he's supplicating to other than Allah, how is this lying? Because of the worship, the du'a is a form of worship. Yes, yeah, so when a person is making du'a, it is as if he's saying that that person or that object of my supplication is capable of answering my du'a. And this is totally false and it, is, uh, it comes under lying. Also, from lying uh, upon Allah, there's another slightly more subtle form of lying against Allah. Often when a, peop when a person speaks about the deen without knowledge, when, a when, a sir when somebody speaks about the religion of Islam without knowledge, then this is lying against Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. How is that the case? Because when he's speaking about the deen, then the deen is, is from Allah. 
So right. if somebody says, for example, this is halal, this is haram, yes. and it's not halal, and the other one is not haram, how is that lying upon Allah? Because we know it's lying, but how is it lying upon Allah? Because Allah hasn't made that halal or hasn't exactly. made that haram. <laughs> exactly the same, uh, exactly the case. So if a person says, for example, alcohol is halal, whereas we know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made drinking alcohol haram, so when a person says drinking alcohol or drinking any or taking any kind of intoxicant, drugs, marijuana, whatever, is halal, then what he's doing, it is as if he's saying Allah has made this halal. Because it is only Allah who makes uh, something halal or haram. It is only Allah. Even the Prophet wasallam, according to the, uh, to the stronger opinion of the scholars, he, never, he wasn't allowed to make something halal or haram. He was only what is known as a muballigh. Somebody who uh, conveys the message from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But, so therefore, the essence of what is halal and haram comes down from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So when a person says, this is halal, this is haram, he is actually lying against Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Let's have some examples of that. People often do this um, in, 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 the, in the real life uh, scenarios. Uh, for example, people praying. And a person who doesn't know, he says, hey, your prayer is invalid. For example, mm. this is a, one example. Let's have some more examples. For example, you know, um, someone might lie and he says, oh, it's okay, to it's a white lie, it's, it's okay. It's, there you it's, go, that it's in it's itself is a lie. Because he's saying it's okay. When he's saying it's okay to do this in the deen of Islam, it's as if he's saying this is halal in the deen of Islam. Let's have some more examples. Again, you mentioned, I think, this one earlier, but it's like if someone asks us a question to a person and he says, oh, this is, this is what you should do, this is this, this is this, when he does not know the it's reality of it. Exactly. When somebody is asking a religious verdict and the person who is being asked does not actually know the answer. He hasn't studied the topic. He doesn't know the ayah of the Quran or the hadith pertaining to that. He doesn't know what the scholars say about it. And then he speaks without knowledge. This is speaking about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala without knowledge. Any more examples? Mm, attributing things that uh, to Islam which is not actually in, in, in Islam. Islam. Yes, and even the opposite of that, taking something yeah. away from Islam, exactly, which yes. is not from Islam. Absolute, yeah. Let's have some examples of that. Um, for instance, like, uh, again, again, when he says that he knows uh, so, uh, something in Islam, I have, uh, I have no example in mind, but uh, it's, uh, it's again... To, uh, to attributing could be uh, in, in many different ways. Mm -hmm. um, like, for instance, you can go into the mosque and, and do a, so and so while you're going, uh, while you're entering a mosque without knowing it. Uh, and you're attributing it to the deen of Islam. I think, mm -hmm. yeah, for example, a lot of the times with Islam under, under media attention, we're, we're under pressure to say things about Islam just to please the, the non-Muslim. That's, very, that's um, a very good yeah. example. And yeah. we'll pick up on that example, inshallah, in the next episode. We will continue on this topic of lying. Uh, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us from this lying. Wa sallallahu wa sallam wa baraka ala nabina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.